What's goody? It's your boy and I'm back with another banging video and today we're checking out 10 NBA legends confessing Michael Jordan was a god. So look, I ain't gave y'all a Jordan video in a while. So I appreciate y'all rocking with me, man. We right back. We rolling. It's a gang thing. So make sure y'all hitting that like button and y'all subscribing if y'all want to see more of these Jordan videos. Um, highlights, whatever it is, drop down in the comments what you want to see. If it's not Jordan, if it is, whatever particular video, drop it down. Uh, hit that like button. Spam it up. Let's get this video to at least 3,000 likes. You feel me? By liking the video the way the YouTube algorithm works, YouTube will show the video to more people so you would be directly helping my channel to grow. You can hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. But with that being said, we're just going to go ahead and jump into it, bro. Let's get it, man. I already know it's about to be crazy, but let's see which legends it is confessing it. Because most likely it's some legends that he really... Put that bag in on. <laughs> like tongue out. But, but let's just let let's just see what it's hitting for. Let's get it. Point blank. I never seen nobody play like he plays. And uh and you can you can include all of them. That wasn't Michael Jordan out there. Whoa. It's God disguised as Michael Jordan. It's just God disguised as Michael Jordan. This phrase which captures the yeah. essence of Michael Jordan's career has always resonated with me when discussing the legend around him. Granted that no one is a god, you have to acknowledge how much Jordan altered the landscape of basketball. He was performing something on the basketball True. court that had never been seen before. The admiration and love Bird and many others felt for Michael Jordan's basketball skills was mirrored in the statement which became renowned. It's evidence of Jordan's influence on the game and his ability for nearly superhuman performances. And that got me thinking about which other NBA legends referred to Michael Jordan as a basketball god, or which stories depicted him as a supernatural figure. So I will present 10 NBA legends who have told unreal stories and portrayed Michael Jordan as a guide. We will start with Shaquille O'Neal, one of the greatest basketball players Shaq. of all time, who has expressed genuine appreciation and regard for Michael Jordan on numerous occasions. Shaq acknowledges Jordan's impact on the game and recognizes him as a basketball icon. He often highlights Jordan's influence on his own career and the league as a whole. His respect for Jordan goes beyond their on-court rivalry, and when he was in an interview with Patrick Bet David, he he showed his ultimate appreciation the by diesel about boy <laughs> was there anybody that you kind of avoided talking smack to because if you did yeah your spirit got bigger and they wanted to beat you or michael jordan you don't want to mess with god <laughs> <laughs> respect you gotta stay away from mike leave that man alone LeBron James holds Michael Jordan. <laughs> wait, wait, before we go on to the number two one i have a one thing to say about shaq diesel bro gotta be mad respect for that one and it gotta be real with jordan even if you didn't believe it was real i'm gonna tell you like this bro shaq does not verify no scrubs if you not as not even you you could be good he's gonna tell you if you're not him so you could think you great you could think you on this level or whatever shaq gonna let you know he gonna keep it 100 percent real i've heard him crush people Y'all, I know y'all heard about the JaVale McGee stuff. So, for Shaq to say that, it, it has a little bit of weight to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, definitely. And he said he that guy's not to be messed with. And Shaq feels like he was the best thing to ever walk on the green, God's green earth. You know what I'm saying? He feels like he the best thing since sliced bread. You know what I'm saying? Best thing since apple juice. So, for him to say, you don't mess with God. Yeah, that's that's a different type of credibility that Jordan has, man. But, uh, let's just jump back into it. I regard as a basketball idol and he has often stated that he grew up watching Jordan and imitating his play style. He respects Jordan's contribution to the game as both a player and a cultural figure. Despite the inevitable comparisons, LeBron has never stopped expressing his respect for Jordan and the lasting That's impact love. he left on the game. You will see how he maintains the same love from 24 years old to 33. Michael Jordan was kind of like that god. He was that 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 angel sent from heaven that that I kind of used him to help me get through some of the darkest days that I had even at people say well you're only nine years old but you know there's a lot of dark days you know when you grow up the way I grew up and, and you never and know what people go in household so you know every other day if I got an opportunity on WGN to watch Mike it gave me another boost of life you know it made me feel that I can make it out of this situation but when I met Michael Jordan for the first time I literally couldn't believe it was him. Yo. I couldn't believe it. Like, people, you know, I felt the dude looked like Jesus Christ to me. <laughs> <laughs> 
he looked like black Je he looked you know he was black jesus to me nobody could tell me anything different I think it was my junior year of high school, I go up to Chicago and I go to a gym called Hoops where he, he plays basketball in the summertime. And before they play, they say Mike always, you know, used to lift before they played. Uh, and I didn't know he was gonna be there. Uh, we walk up there and the first person I see is Charles Oakley. You know, Oak being from Cleveland, dapped him up. I had seen Oak around the city a few times, you know. And Oak moved and when he moves, Mike is sitting on the bench press. But I seen him. I seen him walking towards me, and it was kind of like he was walking on air. He, I, I was, <laughs> he was floating. I had to, I had to pinch myself. Was, was, is that My, Michael? I didn't think he was real, man. You don't understand. Yeah. I didn't think Michael Jordan was real. I only thought he lived in the TV, either in games or commercials or come fly with me on cassette tapes. Wow, yeah. I didn't think he was real. And when I saw him, I was like, if if the man above would have took me that day, I would have lived a hell of a life. I swear to God. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> see yeah, that, that's a different type Tracy of respect, bro. Shouts out to LeBron for that. A deep respect for Michael Jordan. The Grady has spoken highly of Jordan's influence Team on the and the game of basketball as a whole. Here's this interesting clip of McGrady talking about how meeting Michael Jordan when he was only 17 years old had a huge effect on him. The story goes on to show the lasting Mark Jordan made, making a memorable moment in McGrady's basketball career. How was it like playing against MJ your rookie year? Shaking in my boots. First time. <laughs> shaking, in, shaking, shaking in the first time I had the guard. I'm like, yo, this, I'm bad. First of all, let me go back. 1997, MJ them in the playoffs. I think they, they played against the Hawks, right? I'm at the game, playoff game. Bruh, I got an opportunity to go uh, in the back by the locker room after the game. So I'm standing back there. I'm 17 years old, kid. I, I've never been around NBA players like this, or even, you know, I've never been around somebody like MJ. So I'm standing back there, kid, and Pip Black comes Jesus. out. Pip comes out. All these players start coming out. Mike comes around that corner. Bruh, I ain't gonna lie to you. The man had a glow, bro. I swear, Mike, Mike, dog, that shit is real. <laughs> I believe it. That shit is real. Hey, hey, K, hey, KG said the same thing. You just feel his energy. Um, He'll say I'm shit. Just, you feel yeah. that energy. I'm not like I'm what? Not joking, bro. It's, Black it's Jesus, real. Man, I'm telling bro, you. Came out Let me pause. That that's the third person just that I've heard that out of my like. All right, KG said it. He said it, and LeBron said it, and then like, let's think about the three people that I just named. These are legends, like. NBA Hall of Famers in their own right. So, like, dead ass for them to be giving him that type of respect. And not even, that's not even giving him highly guarded respect. It's like giving him the utmost respect. Like, no, bro, I seen an aura around him. He's like Jesus. He's like the basketball god. Like, just, I have to give him that. And these are the best of the best. If anything, if they could be debatably the person that, that people want to say is better than him. So at the end of the day, man, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy to hear that. It's crazy to, to see that these guys are at that level. Man, it, to, to show the appreciation. And these are this is when they was young. So they would see him when they were young and just like be like, dude, it's like it's it's like it's not even real. Like LeBron said, it's like, bro, I thought he only lived in the TV. I see him. I I did ask. And you could see it in his reaction or you could see it on his face that did, like he, he was dead serious. It was he was 33, a grown man telling the same exact story he told on the on a, like um an interview when he was 20 something. 22, I think they said, and it was the same exact story with the same exact enthusiasm, with the same exact feeling. It's just real. Mike is that guy. If you if you want to be a hooper, a ball player, there's nobody better to look up to. Well, LeBron is a good guy to look up to too. But that, you know what I'm saying. But the pedestal goes even higher than LeBron when you really think about it. And at the top of that pedestal, it's Jordan. <laughs> Yeah, man, that is insane. But I really think I really every one of these people, LeBron, T Mac, I respect their games. Tracy, Tracy McGrady, Kevin Garnett, um, and it, it, it's Larry Bird. Come on, man, these are the greatest. These are arguably the people that could be number one if if Jordan's not number one. That's insane. But uh, let's jump back into it. I'm like, damn, bro. I ain't know what to say, man. I was like, that's 
<laughs> MJ, dog. That's MJ. In Lost an interesting for words. conversation, basketball legends Gary Payton and Kevin Garnett were in the same room and talked about what makes Michael Jordan different from Kobe Bryant and LeBron James. As they talked about Jordan, both hmm. Payton and Garnett, hmm. who are regarded as legends who made opponents afraid during their long careers, changed the mood. The very mention of Jordan creates a unique atmosphere that emphasizes the unmatched influence and aura that surrounds this <laughs> legend. <laughs> I would have Jordan. You took Jordan? I'm never going against Jordan, dog. I've never seen it. I thought Michael Jordan was Jesus Christ, like playing to be Michael Jordan. I swear to God. <laughs> we called him Black Jesus for a reason. I played against him a long time and he just did it. You know, he, he, right. just had, he had all that. He just had the mentality. Whatever play. it is. And if it gets close, he got it. He gonna take the shot. The basketball world is well aware of Allen Iverson's Ooh. deep respect for Michael Jordan. But for those who <laughs> haven't seen it yet, this video does a magnificent job of capturing the incredible effect Jordan had on Iverson when he oh first met in person. It captures the incredible experience of Iverson meeting Jordan face to face and provides a personal look at the deep respect and admiration that the legendary player inspired in one of the greatest players of all time. Check it out. I, w I walked out on the court and I, I looked at him, and for the first time in my life, a human being didn't look real to me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if y'all watch the Chappelle show, but he, he, he talk about a certain incident where he seen somebody seen Rick James. And, <laughs> like, I literally seen his aura. Like, yo! Like, he, it looked like he was, it looked like he was glowing. That is and insane. I'm, and I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm saying to myself, like, man. That's Mike. Reggie Miller, who's a known trash talker in the NBA, had a welcome to the league moment Yo. with Michael Jordan in his rookie year. This was a humbling experience with Reggie Miller, and it made sure that he will never talk trash to Michael Jordan. Rookie year, uh -huh. we were playing the Chicago Bulls, and this is Michael Jordan's third or fourth year in. Okay. And we were playing the next exhibition game in some obscure place. And most veterans do not like to play in exhibition games. They want to get to the real thing. I'm a wide-eyed, energetic rookie. And we're playing this he was young. game and Michael's going through the motion. And Chuck Person, who's on my team, who's a trash talker as well, is like, can you believe Michael Jordan? The guy everyone's talking about, who's supposed to be able to walk on water. You're out here killing him, Reg. This is in the first half. He's <laughs> like, you should be talking to him. He's like, you know, you're right, Michael. Who do you think you are? No. The great Michael Jordan. That's right. There's a new kid on No, town, right? Reggie. Kind of looks at me and starts shaking his head. So at half, I have 10. And he has four points, right? I'm doing all this talking. He's like, okay. Bad idea. End of the, end of the game in the second half, he ended up with 44. Woke the dragon I up. Ended up with Woke 12. up the dragon. <laughs> so he outscored me 40 to 2. And as he's oh my goodness, off, 40 to like, 2 is crazy. Sure, and be careful, you never talk to black Jesus like that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm so sorry. Woke up the I'm dragon. I'm so sorry, Black Jesus. I'm so That's sorry. all you could do. Did you ever or do it again? Do. Never to Michael. That's all you could do. Never to Michael. Okay, there is one legend who refused to call him Black Jesus and wanted all the smoke no matter what, and that was Kobe Bryant. Kobe had super high respect for Michael Jordan and knew that Jordan had the blueprint for the game he wanted to emulate. They had a mentor and mentee relationship that was my favorite in all of sports. And these. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. That it adds up so perfectly. I like this way he did this video. Shouts out to you for making this video, bro. But um, Kobe knows it, but the person Kobe was could never admit that because he was Kobe. He if if he's another one of those I was talking about, bro. If if it's not Jordan, it's him. This is great. So Kobe couldn't admit. It's just it's that Mamba mentality. I'm telling y'all, bro. Is he knows it, and they probably had to come, but he could never admit it. It's it's that pride. It's that it's that mamba mentality. I'm telling y'all. But um, yeah, I like the way he put that, and I like the fact that he put him on the list, even though he didn't admit it, because Kobe does have the utmost respect for him. And Kobe, like, it, even if Kobe never said a word out of his mouth, me as a basketball fan and you as a basketball fan, look at Kobe game. Mirrors Jordan game. Like the closest thing, period, anybody has to Jordan game. So if anything, that's the highest quality of respect that you could give, even if no words were spoken. But at the same time, you know what I'm saying? 
I just got to throw it in there. That's that Mamba mentality, and that's why he would never actually call him basketball Jesus or basketball God or NBA, whatever you want to call him, the, the God of the NBA or the GOAT of all time, whatever you going to call him. It was just, it's, it's harder for Kobe to admit that because that's, that's kind of a mantle that's like could be right there for him too. That's just how I feel about that. But let's jump back into it. Clips, you will see the amount of inspiration Jordan brought to Kobe. You know, so like when, <laughs> I tell you, like when we when I was in high school, um, and uh, I used to work out with the Seventy Sixers. I used to ask him, you know, what's it like to guard Mike? You know, Mike, you mean Black Jesus? I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> black who? Oh, well, we call him Black Jesus, or you can call him Black Cat. I'm like, I'm gonna call him fucking Mike. That's his fucking name. <laughs> So the level of fear that he inspired in others was yes. insane. Wow. And Crazy. I would tell him, I said, when I face him, we're going to go at it. He says, oh, you don't want to do that. I'm like, what? Man, you don't know me, man. And so when we matched up, I think he understood that. And you know, when I was no 18, down. my first year, he got the I best know Kobe of me not a bunch down. of times. I was right there the next play. You're not intimidating me. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. And I think he saw that level Mamba of respect. Mamba mentality, boy. I think he was boy. the same way at 18 years old. And that common bond is, mm -hmm. is where I think, uh, you know, where our connection was built. Step out there on the court. Yeah. Taking heads off. It's not, it's not, there's no, I don't want to hear it. Like, I don't want to hear Michael's the best player in the world. I want to hear they call him Black Jesus. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> you have to show me. Hey. Right? <laughs> so... <laughs> That's yeah. that. Right. <laughs> All right. I feel now, that, man. That's his mentality. Meant by his famous quote. In 1986, Michael Jordan scored an amazing 63 points against the Boston Celtics, considered by most Whew. to be one of the greatest teams in NBA history. Even though the Celtics had a great defense, Jordan came into their home court like a one-man army. His amazing play still holds the record for most points scored in a playoff game, showing how skilled and determined he was. Jordan reached a level of greatness during that game that left fans in he was awe. different it was an important moment in the story of his known career that wasn't michael jordan out there it was god disguised as michael jordan rephrase that i'm gonna cut you off god in the basketball uniform after the game larry bird would say i didn't think anyone was capable of doing what michael has done to us nobody like him <laughs> point blank I crazy about play like he plays and uh i mean you can you can include all of them it's hard to believe a guy score that many baskets and uh uh and they lose, but uh, I know we started Dennis Johnson out on him, and then we went with uh, Danny Ainge, myself, uh, which it was really easy then when I started guarding him. Uh, then Bill Walton, and we was trying to run him to help all the time, but he had his outside shot going so well that he really didn't need to penetrate that much. That was... Yo, coming from Bird, that's insane. I'm not going to lie. Coming from Bird, that's very insane. Because Bird, it's, it's hard to get the respect out of him. But if, if it's there, it's there, and he'll give it. So... It's it's really a lot coming from Bird, but the way Bird just put it, it's literally nobody, and he he throws everybody in a lot of that. Ain't nobody could play like him. And when we did play him, we had possibly the best team in the league, arguably, which we know that that Celtics team, you know, could have been the best, like skill wise. You know what I'm saying? Even if they won the championship or not that year, skill wise, you know what I'm saying? Be excuse me, best team in the league. And for him to be like, yo, no matter who we put on this guy. It's buckets. You know what I'm saying? He was like, he, we put me on him, and it was easier than any of them. So, you know, it, it's, it's not nothing we could have do about him. And, bro, <laughs> this is what people say about Bird. He's saying that about Jordan, man. That's a different level, bro. The respect these guys are giving him, I love it. But not only the respect, bro, just these are facts, man. He got the receipts that he's the GOAT. You know what I'm saying? People. They gonna let you know, man. He he was a different type of entity, and there was nothing we could do about him. Like we could just hope to try to contain him and fight. Like at the bad boy Pistons, they just tried to beat him up. Like that was that was the game plan. You know what I'm saying? We're not even playing basketball in the world. We're just gonna tackle him when he goes to the goal and just hope that they don't. Like just hope hope that he doesn't make it when we do that. He was that good. But um, yeah, man. He he's a different type of talent. Let's jump back into it. 
And before I show the last legend, here is Zion Williamson who shared his story about the first time he met Michael Jordan. You get to see a player who never played against Jordan and never got the chance to watch him play live in his prime years. Talk about a presence he never felt before. And then after that, I have a very interesting clip of Michael Jordan's former coach, Doug Collins, sharing how the fans were when Michael Jordan was just in their vicinity. When I met him for the very first time, uh -huh. uh, it was at uh, All-Star Weekend, my rookie year, and it was at his Jordan brand party. Yeah. And it's like you said, like, <laughs> you, you can't, you can't describe that. You can't describe that feeling you get. It's, <laughs> it's, it's one of those. Yo. That's him. Yes. <laughs> and he don't even play no more. Like, you, you like, that's him. Like, yes. That's <laughs> the guy. Yes. Uh, so, I mean. That's like insane. Said, it was like me. Meeting Black Jesus or something like that. That's him right there. It's almost scary um, when you go on the road to see the reaction that people give Michael. I mean, uh, the kids that come to the hotel to, to try to catch Michael getting on the bus, and he's got to get on the bus, and the look of disappointment on their face when they, they don't get his autograph. Uh, the, the response, I mean, there was a great picture from the Portland paper. Michael walking onto the floor with our team and there's a single file line and you see in the background all these kids standing taking Yo. pictures and like reaching out to touch him to it's touch like, black uh, jesus i compare it to biblically about people reaching out trying to touch touch christ's garment it's like they just want to touch him and now the last legend we have is magic johnson that's Magic crazy. recognizes Jordan's influence not only on the court, but also in shaping the global popularity of basketball. Their mutual respect is evident in various public statements and interactions. The story Magic shared about Michael Jordan showed his God-given ability to hang in the air and do moves that Magic didn't even think were possible. And Magic explained <laughs> it in a hilarious way. I don't usually talk trash, but I had to that time. <laughs> so I said, Michael, if you don't turn into Air Jordan, we're going to blow y'all out. <laughs> Man, Damn. he started Turned sweating. <laughs> it was old. That tongue went long. <laughs> <laughs> you know when that tongue comes out. It's over. It's a problem. <laughs> he, about, he about to do something. <laughs> Boy, that dude came out that timeout. He scored about four straight threes. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> And I went, oh, man. Then he came down. I got to show you this one. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. So, I won't hurt myself. Okay. <laughs> so he stole the basketball. He coming down the right side. He takes off. David Robinson coming this way. So Mike just cuffed. And he just looked at In the air. Him. And he kept looking. He kept looking. He kept oh, no. looking. He went all the way down, Jack. He did a 360. Ooh. Bam! I said, that's it. That's, that's it. it. It's <laughs> over. Now. That's him. It's over. I bet and, it is. Uh, Larry Bird not sitting down. So he come in with his cigar. <sighs> Got his drink. <laughs> so how old is he right now? He's 26, 27? Yeah, yeah, young. Young you know. boy. Yeah. yeah. So I just want y'all to know. <laughs> There's a new sheriff in town. <laughs> no. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And tell me, what is your favorite Jordan story? So make sure you like, share, subscribe. And until next time. I ain't gonna lie. My favorite one had to be the, the bird with all the magic one. Uh, the magic one was like, it was definitely super funny. And it's even funnier because he got it started. Like, you messed that up. You should have just let him just go through the motions. You want to start talking? Woke up the dragon. Um, yeah, man. E e either one of the stories where they wake up the dragon is definitely one. But um, I feel like my biggest thing out of this whole take from all these stories was the aura. Every single one of these people, you know what I'm saying? Is it just the fact that they like just idolize him so much? And it's just it's, it's so many sensational feats that are like dang near impossible. And it's like it's like you it just it's one of those echoes like are just, you know, like the. The president, somebody you don't never see in person, or black Jesus, somebody you probably have never seen, but you always hear about him. You always hear. So if you do see him, it's just like it's it's not even real. And but even I, I get that. But his celebrity is on a different level. Like everybody knows who Jordan is, but the aura, 
is the thing that each and every player spoke on that aura. He, he really got to be black basketball Jesus, NBA Jesus. There's nobody. Like, legacy-wise, feats-wise, it's, it's hard to compare. Um, but um, I appreciate you guys rocking with me on this video, man. Um, always try to get a couple of Jordan videos in when I can. And if y'all want to see more Jordan videos, make sure y'all leaving a like. By liking the video the way the YouTube algorithm works, YouTube will show the video to more people. And you'll be directly helping me to grow. And I'd appreciate that. But other than that, make sure you're subscribing. Everyone's subscriber counts. I'm trying to get the hundreds of thousands of subscribers. So if you haven't done that yet, hit the little subscribe button. It's free. Hit, hit the little buttons at the bottom. It's very free. And you just help me to grow. So in two seconds, you helping me to pay some bills, man. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's, it's, it's a job, bro. So I need you to go ahead and hit the buttons. I'm on my cash nasty. It's time to pay some bills. So we turning up this year. So I hope you know what it is. Join the fam. And we got a lot of stuff coming for you. Until next time. Much day.